What's going on guys? Today I'm going to make my case against why investing is not the best way to get rich. And I'm also going to make the case that most people who invest will never ever be rich. The title of this video is called the false narrative of investing. And before we get into that, I want to give a shout out and thanks to all of the new people. There's like 30,000 of y'all. I really appreciate the well-constructed, um, grammatically correct comments. You guys are really, every morning I wake up and I see all of these beautiful comments from these people who are intellectual, who are looking for subs, uh, content of substance. So I really appreciate you guys because that's one of the reasons that the thumbnails are black with white writing. I'm not trying to do stupid clickbaity, stupid faces, all that other type of stuff. So I really, really appreciate you guys. All right. So one of the things, and this is going to be a really controversial video because I believe Dave Ramsey is lying because I have listened to the Dave Ramsey show many, many times. And it's like in 10 years, you'll be a millionaire. I've heard him say this and based upon the snapshot of the stand S and P 500 for the last 11 years, it's been getting about 20%. And also if you were to invest $300 per month for 20 years at 20%, you still wouldn't be a millionaire, still wouldn't be a millionaire. So this is one of the things that I consistently see that you should invest. And this is credit the false narrative that you're going to get rich being investing. And I'm going to also prove to you why most people who even invest consistently and diligently will never be rich. All right. So let's go with the basis of this. First of all, I had to do some research for this video because the overall return for the S and P 500 for the last 30 years has been 10.5%. But what did I just say for the last 11 years, it's been over 20%. Why did it? Well, wait a minute. What, what is happening? So when you go back and you start to look, in the 80s, the S and P return was four point something, two point. And I'm going to explain why I believe that is happening. So first of all, let's go ahead and take information that we know. 70% of Americans, which is over 200 million people cannot come up with $2,000 cash in 30 days. Okay. Remember that number $2,000 cash in 30 days yet the same average people are supposed to put $300 a month, which is $3,600 per year into a brokerage account for 30 years without interruption. You see, you can't save $2,000 cash, which would take you literally six and a half months with that same 300 bucks. But for some reason, <clears throat> there's this false presumption that these same people are going to put in there $300 month after month, year after year, decade after decade in the brokerage account. <clears throat> and I already told you $300 per month at 20% over 20 years is like $750,000, which is $250,000 short of being a millionaire. Okay. So let's take this 10.5%. And this is where Dave Ramsey's lying to you. He never mentions inflation because this adjusted for inflation is an average return, annualized yearly return of 7%, 7%. And if you exist and this 6.5% for 30 years, you will not be a millionaire. So when you bring in inflation and inflation is very, very important. Do you know that a million dollars in 1980, you would need 3.4 million to buy with a million dollars bought in 1980 today. 
So we can safely say with inflation that 30 years from now, you're going to need six million to get what a million will get today. You're going to need about six or seven million. This is inflation is real, real inflation is very real because like the S and P 500 did 20 percent, but inflation was 7 percent last year. So the return was 13 percent. It wasn't actually 20 percent because inflation is very, very real. You know, I'm a child of the 70s. I remember when a gallon of gas was 40 cents. What's a gallon of gas regular? It's three dollars and 20 cents. 320, 350, whatever. I use premium, so I'm not, I don't really look at that price. So the, anyone that is telling you that you're going to get an annualized return of 10.5% and they never mention inflation, they're woefully ignorant or they're intentionally lying to you. Because one of the things I did with a lot of this research is I went into, and essentially you go to uh, Fidelity, you go to Chase, and you read their blogs, they all say the same thing that I do. You need to establish an emergency fund. You need to have cash money in the bank that is not part of your investment strategy. But let's dive a little deeper. Why did the S&P 500 move from 2% to 4% yearly returns to 20%? I have a theory. Do you know the United States population was 196 million in 1960? We've gained a popular, we've gained 35% increase in population, <clears throat> but something strange has started to happen with the population. We're not growing the way that we used to. Actually, demographically, white people are dying out. That's right white women are not having enough babies to replace the current level of white people. So white people are dying out and uh, Hispanics and black people are pretty much carrying the weight, but we're still not producing enough babies to dramatically increase the population. So I feel those 2%, 4%, 5% annualized returns from the S S and P 500 are going to come back. And this is why, once again, even that 20 percent, 20 something percent, once you go ahead and throw inflation in the market wrench, it ain't 20 percent. And once you start to really, really dive into the numbers and I, I begin to really think, because I've been saying this for the last 12 years, entrepreneurs make more money. And I did some research. The biggest investors typically are entrepreneurs. And why are they the biggest investors? Because they have no the money. If you go through the top 1,000 richest people in the world, they're, they're business owners. They're not investors. And this is why I call the false narrative because everyone, and I, I see many videos that will talk about, you shouldn't keep your money in the bank. You should uh, invest your money, right? And then in the video somewhere, they're like, oh, you need to have an emergency fund and also, I'm about to go ahead and talk about why this is a false narrative on investing. And this is data that you, 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 and you, you, you can look up. The average brokerage account of the average 60 year old is $200,000. This is someone who's been in the market for decades. Now, once you understand American income, fully 80 million people make less than $30,000 a year, right? Once you understand that, and then 75% make less than $50,000 a year, you begin to understand. And these are people who have diligently put that 200 and that $300 away. But here's a few little wrinkles. And this is a, another reason that Dave Ramsey's lying, lying to you. Here's the thing. And for you to actually get to the 750, not even a million to get to 750. You have to invest your $300 every month, every year, and every decade without fail. Now, what do I mean by that? You can never leave the market. If you 
during your 30 year tenure left the market three times. Like the market was crashing, you kind of panic, you did some panic selling, you got out the market just three times. You would destroy 50 to 70% of your gains trying to time the market. Let me say that again. If you, during this 30 year tenure, came out the market three times, one to three times, you would destroy your gains because typically what happens in the market, the market is very unpredictable. So you'll move out the market and then while you're out the market, the market shoots up. You know, I've studied this, I did the research. Typically when the market makes a move up, this is after a, like right now, the markets are trash, you know, and people are, you know, Bitcoin is down, everything is down. And I feel that this is just the beginning based upon all of the research I've done on the economy, because the stimulus money is out of the economy and we're dealing with real marketplace forces like your, 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 your checking account. Once your checking account is empty, you don't have no more money. You can't spend any more money because you physically don't have any more money. So this is something that we're starting to see in the economy in many sectors that people are dealing with, like the repo man. I started to do a video, I was thinking about the repo man is back. Repos are up 50%. Repo, so the repo man is back. So now the economy during the global reset, we're starting to see. So even if you, were financially disciplined, and let's say you had the long-term emergency fund, you had the short-term emergency fund, and you had the family operating account, and you put $300 a month in the stock market consistently. And let's say you were successful at that, you would still only have 750,000, which is better to have than not to have, but this is why I'm saying most people, even the folks who are in the market will never get rich. They will never get rich because number one, you can have good money management habits, which is critical to you being able to consistently put this money in the market. So if you want to become a millionaire in 10 years, guess how much money you need to put in the market? You need to put in $5,000 a month, which is $60,000 a year but 75% of America don't make 50,000. So 80% of America doesn't make enough money to put into the market to become a millionaire in 10 years. And it, like, like I said, I listen to Dave Ramsey. I love listening to Dave Ramsey because all these folks call in and they, believe it or not, Dave Ramsey has a pretty affluent listener base. I have consistently heard people call in, you know, and he's like, what's your income? Uh, we do 140, we do 240, we do 300. Uh, he had a kid that called in that was making like 300,000 a month or something like that. So Dave's, Dave has a very financially enabled crowd who listen to him. These are not the Pookies and the Ray Rays who are listening to Dave Ramsey. These are educated, well-paid white folk. It's a totally different demographic and people are confused about their money. But once again, you're not going to get rich anytime soon, if ever in the stock market. It's just not going to happen because you don't have enough money to put in the stock market. I'm going to tell you, years and years ago, I was in the stock market. I'm currently, I'm not in the stock market. And this was a period of time when I was saving 50% of my income. And in about three years, I got to a $1.5 million portfolio because I was saving 50% of my income. So I was just throwing all my income in the market because I had such high cash flow and I had like $50,000 just set aside. So my portfolio grew not because of capital appreciation or compounding, it grew because of contributions. And if you run the numbers, just if you ever get bored, find an investment calculator online and just start running scenarios and you will see over and over again, if you put a lot of money in the market over 10 years, the majority of your portfolio base will be from contributions, not appreciation and compounding. However, if you just, you know, let's say you had a million dollars 
and you threw it in the market and you didn't add any more money for 30 years, that million would turn into an astounding, astonishing amount of money because you started with a, start, a large amount of money. You throw a million in the market and no, add, don't add nothing else to it. Just let it reinvest your dividends and compound. It would probably be, I haven't ran that number. So I'm, I'm just gonna say, I wouldn't be shocked if it's 15 million or maybe even 20 million, but you started with a large number. And I, I consistently see this, you know, there are many YouTube channels based upon investing and the presumption is that you're gonna get rich sometime in the very near future. And the reality is unless you deploy very risky options trading strategies, you're not getting rich anytime soon. You're not making a lot of money and the number of options traders lose a lot of money because it's very, very risky because there are people on YouTube that will have you thinking that trading options is super simple. It's risk free. It's not. I have a friend who is a millionaire and I'm going to tell you his story. My friend's father died and left him $5 million. And he got into options trading with that $5 million. In two years, he lost $4 million because he didn't know what he was doing. And then, you know, he, he, you know, he kind of freaked out because the bulk of his money was gone. So he started to really work hard. He started to do some research. And you know what he did? He went out and got a job as an options trader for a company. And they trained him and he started to see where he went wrong. So he was working his job, which he was making six figures, and he was trading his personal portfolio on the side. And over five years, he was able to get that to $10 million. But he told me, he said, if I had never gotten this job at this trading desk, being in the industry, I never would have got this money. So here is someone who made millions of dollars option trading after losing $4 million and realizing that he needed some help. So once again, there are many people out here who feel that they can turn $1,000 into $100,000 during options trading. And this is where I bring up the possibility syndrome. And I'm going to tell you something that happened to me. Years and years ago, I bought a storage unit for $1. $1, right? And it had a safe in it. And typically in the storage auction industry, safes are usually empty. Nine times out of 10, they're empty or they contain worthless stuff. Well, this safe actually contained jewels, Morgan silver dollars, 100 African Cougarans, which I still have. So I made $60,000 in six months selling the contents of that safe. So it was, I knew it was possible. And I was chasing that and I was spending money and I was taking all kinds of unnecessary risk because I felt that I was going, because it was possible. Do people win the lottery? Yes, they do. Do people become wealthy in options tradings? Yes, they do. Do people become wealthy in day trading? Yes, they do. Do people go out and buy storage units and make $200,000. I did it. Now, this is the inoculation of the possibility syndrome. Once you know it is possible, all bets are off. You're gonna act as if it's probable. See, just because it's possible doesn't mean that it is likely. And I bought maybe 2000 units. And there was about 40 out of 2000 that were significantly remarkable. So it happened, but it was very, very rare. It was really, really rare. And one of the things I consistently see with the YouTubers who actually display their portfolios, hardly any of these guys have a million dollars. I've seen people display their portfolios like 200, to 500,000 is where the majority of them are. And the reason that they're there is because they're YouTubers. I'm gonna tell you something. 
I'm on track to make $12,000 this month from YouTube. And this is a small channel. This is a small channel. When you get to the Meet Kevins, the Graham Steffens of the world, these guys make two, three, four, five hundred thousand a month from YouTube. That is why their portfolios are doing so well, not because of investing. Their portfolios are doing well because they have mad, mad capital to, contrib to, to contribute. And uh, kudos to them for actually investing their money versus tricking off. But you don't have a YouTube channel that pays you. In my case, I'm gonna make $12,000 this month from YouTube, which is quite significant because if I make 12, and, and also I'm about to tell you something, for YouTube, January and February are slow months for AdSense. So my AdSense is going to go up uh, March, April, May, June, and then it's really gonna go up next December. So I'm on pace to do 150, maybe 200,000 from YouTube this year. I tell you that because this is where you're getting your information. And YouTubers are known to create topics that get views, not necessarily topics to help you. Because I've actually followed the advice of many YouTubers and I found out that the, the advice was 100% garbage. Garbage. So if you're looking at a YouTuber who, and like I said, they have a lot of extra money to throw into their investments that you don't have. And even if you were a financially disciplined person and you put your $300 in there, and once again, I feel that the S&P market is gonna go back to the days of two and four and five and 6%. This record bull run, which incidentally, the millionaire next door was ridden during the last bull run, which ended. So we're, the market goes up, but the market's gonna come down. So I feel in the future that the S&P uh, isn't gonna have that 20% return every year. And when the market is good, everyone feels that they're a financial genius. I had someone leave a comment talking about, you know, that it is possible and this person hasn't invested for 30 years. I have been an entrepreneur for 24 years. I've been an entrepreneur longer than most of you have been investors. And I can tell you from experience, markets go up, markets come down. Like during the pandemic, the repo man stopped repo. The repo man is back with in full effect. So once again, you, could start a small business. And I have a video on uh, Hustlers Kung Fu talking about that. We need to stop thinking side hustle because side hustle and getting rich in the stock market, they run in the same little circle because it's possible if you do certain things, but is it likely? No, it's not likely. It's not likely at all. And I have seen it over and over again that you would assume that investors make more money than business owners. And, you know, I'm not starting in the YouTube beast, but back in the day, I kind of got into it. And as a business owner, I got into it with this one guy who was an investor. And I found out I made more money in one month than he made the whole year from his investments. And I'm like, when we got in, because, you know, he, he was like, yeah, he was all rah, rah, rah and everything. And we start comparing notes and I showed him my bank account. And he, he disappeared. He stopped communicating. I was like, where'd you go, bro? And I hit him up like six, seven times. He's like, he had nothing to say after that. So I'm here to tell you, business owners will get richer than investors every time. Successful business owners will get much richer, much quicker, much younger than investors. And I'm here to set the record straight because how many investors can go out and pay $120,000 for a brand new Porsche? Point those guys out to me. And then in the same month, spend another $80,000 on the SUV and spend 200K in one month on cars and next month have that 200K back. How many investors can do that? You know, investing is sexy. And this is why it's hot. It's really, really hot because uh, 
like I said, I, I'm, I'm thinking about starting a credit repair business and I put that out there and I had a lot of people hit me up. Uh, once again, I am not doing, I'm not accepting any clients for the credit repair. I am not going to get on the phone. I'm not going to talk with you because everyone wants, you know, once again, I have the YouTube business, I have the car rental business, I have the online course business, I have the consulting business. I don't have a lot of free time to just chit chat. I just don't. So, um, you know, thanks for your confidence, but uh, I am not accepting any more free clients. Uh, I just had to put that out there because I got a whole bunch of people who hit me, who want to talk to me, who want to get on the phone, who are coming in town, who want to go to dinner. Uh, it's a no dog. I don't have time for that. I simply don't have time. Like today is a crazy day, the things I got to do today. But once again, it's a false narrative that you as an investor will become wealthy anytime soon. And there's a guy here on YouTube the name of the channel is the plain bagel. The guy's name is Richard. He breaks it down. He breaks it down. And surprisingly, and with the demographics, and this is why I said, shout out to all of the new people here, because you people are intellectuals. You, you like solid content of substance. And that's kind of the same thing that's happening at Richard's channel. He has a lot of subscribers. He does very well. And he, he broke it down. But you will have YouTuber after YouTuber gassing you up that you could throw a little money in the stock market and you're going to become rich sometime in the foreseeable rich future. It's not going to happen. I will say my friend who does options, it, he he had to lose four million to learn how to trade options. Let me say that he had to lose four million. And, you know, he, he does very well now, but he's got probably like 20 years of experience of trading options now. So. Once again, guys, it's a false narrative. And if you want to get rich in 10 years, start a business. If you want to get rich in 10 years, start a business. If you want, and also, I'm getting ready to revamp everything. Uh, once again, shout out to all the new people. A lot of you are hitting me up. You're looking for training. I am going to start something brand new for you guys February, because today, yeah, we got more one more week in January and I'm going to start this in February. I'm going to start a whole new training thing because, you know, what I just say experience. I've learned a lot from my three training portfolio portfolios. I've learned a soul bunch and I'm going to launch something new for you guys. That's going to be talking about finances, because once again, you could be a successful entrepreneur with bad money management habits and that can ruin your life. You can have a whole bunch of money and you can be going broke. So I'm gonna to put together something new for you guys to let you know, because once again, because I've been thinking, I've been thinking, thinking, thinking about it because why do so many people feel that investors make more money than business owners? And you know, like I said, I'm not doing the more, I'm not doing the flexing, if you know this, uh, it's a pretty toned down presentation because uh, this is the global reset. And I feel like I predicted, and like, you know, when I talk about Bitcoin, people are emotionally attached to Bitcoin. They get super mad when I talked about it. But I said Bitcoin was gonna crash, and it did. And I feel it's gonna go lower. And the whole crypto market, you know, and people's like, it's on sale, it's on sale. This global reset is super nasty. It is super nasty. Um, the woman I knew that I talked about who's about to be homeless, she is now currently homeless. And once again, I've learned to let people do what they want to do because I can give you all of the great advice in the world. And if you're not ready to receive it, so you know what she did? She went out and bought a new truck to lower her car payment $80. Yeah. So she got into more debt. She traded off because, uh, you know, she was able to trade her present vehicle in and with the rebates and get this with no money out of pocket to save $80 a year with little regard to now she's going to be in debt for an additional three years. I, I, I just 
heard the story and she was so happy and I was just like, okay. See, <laughs> I, I was just like, you gotta pay more money because you, you, you already had that one truck and now you're, because the loan started all over. So now she's got to pay more money to save. Mathematically, it makes no sense when you really sit down and look at it. And I, I like, once again, and um, she got mad at me because of uh, something I said, and uh, we're not really communicating anymore. <laughs> and uh, you got to let people be with it. Because like, once again, uh, my advice to her was to sell the truck and get a used vehicle and not have a car payment. That was my advice to her and that, you know, went over it. And I was just sitting there like, you now are in more debt and you have to pay money longer. I'll tell you a little story about my money. You know, I have a storage unit. Uh, when I moved from the house into this spot, I had a lot of stuff that I knew wasn't going to fit in my new place. So I rented a storage unit. And my storage unit was $257 per month when I rented it in October. So October, November, December, and January, I've paid $1,000 for that storage unit. Now, between eBay, Craigslist, and Facebook Marketplace, I've sold $30,000 worth of stuff. Once again, I paid $1,000 for storage, right? And I sold $30,000 worth of stuff. And I currently have just a few things in there. I have a bedroom set, I got some lamps, but I got a notice from the storage facility that my rent was gonna go up to 357. I was like, whoa, that's $4,000 a year. So what I did, I had a problem. I was trying to sell this bedroom set with a mattress and the mattress was the problem because it's like, does it have any stains? And the mattress has stains because I had someone staying with me and they peed in the bed. And I'm just like, what? They got drunk and they peed in the bed. So this mattress was the hold up. So you know what I did? I listed this mattress on Facebook Marketplace for free and the guy came and got it in 45 minutes. And then I downgraded my storage unit from that 250 storage to $140 storage unit. Now, I could easily pay that $4,000, right? Not a problem. But why spend money that you don't have to spend? See, there are people who would have let that stuff, I actually know someone who has a storage unit, she's paying like $450, and she's just not really interested. And I was like, uh, told her, if you let that stuff sit in there three, and four time, three, three four years, you're gonna pay for that stuff three and four times. This is, this is how I am. I have the money, could easily pay it, but I'm sitting there like, whoa, 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 whoa. And when I got that notice, I got busy, I solved the problem, and you know, the bedroom set, which is cracking me up, I keep getting people asking me what are the dimensions of the, it's a dresser and two nightstands. Uh, it could fit easily in this little spot here. So I don't care how small the bedroom is, and I'm just sitting there like, <laughs> once again, and I was thinking about giving it away so I can get rid of that storage unit because when you start crunching the numbers to hold on to it was gonna cost me more money than it was worth. And people don't run the numbers like that. And this is one of the things, because I'm gonna do, like I said, I'm gonna do a whole bunch of new training for you guys. I'm gonna set it up. <laughs> A football season's about to be over. I'm about to go back to Sunday trainings and it's going to be an economic classroom for you guys because I know this stuff because, you know, years and years ago, I was just like you. I was working a regular job. Didn't have, you know, didn't have horrible credit, but didn't really have credit. Um, didn't have a savings account. I used to do pawn shop, title loan, rent to own, all that stupid stuff. And I have become financially fluid because of being a business owner and 100% getting into the business world exposed me to people who taught me so many things. And if I had never made this urge to enter the business world, 
I never would have met these people and I never would have learned these things. So starting a business is one of the reasons that I am financially literate and why I run the numbers on everything. Like I said, <clears throat> she bought a new vehicle to save 80 bucks a month and she's got three more years of payments. Mathematically, it makes no sense, but in her head, it made sense and I'm just sitting there like, okay. Um, but once again, this is something I've been screaming and um, I'm not the only one who's noticed this. There's other people who've noticed this. And also, I need to bring this up. Let's say you get to that million dollar mark in 30 years. It ain't going to be what it is today. So there is something that I call like right now I have cash in the bank and I know everyone's like, oh, whoa, 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 you should have that money in the market. You should be investing. No, I, no, no. I sleep well at night knowing that I could live the next five years if I made it easily, if I, met, if I didn't make another penny. That gives me comfort. That gives me comfort. And as an entrepreneur, and I want you guys to hear me because this is the messaging that you're getting that you shouldn't have cash in the bank. You should be in investments. You should have something appreciating your money, which isn't false. However, as an entrepreneur, your best friend is cash money in the bank. I'm going to tell you some banks will give you loans and give you like Chase is a relationship bank. I get a call from Chase Bank every quarter. Hey, Mr. Cameron, you know, it's just, there's nothing wrong with your accounts. We're just like, everything's going, they want to keep me as a customer because I keep money in the bank. And I'm going to start exploiting that relationship because, you know, I've been, like, like I said, you know, you know, one of the reasons I got so many credit cards is I was playing a credit card game. You know, signing up for this bonus and these miles and that's it. And I actually got rid of my American Express because I'm not really traveling and I'm not, I'm more of a, I'm like everything I, I push now is cash back. Cash back. Uh, the Apple card, I got that recently. I can get 2% cash back, unlimited cash back, but you have to use Apple Pay. So everything that I have is a cash back card. Um, I don't, I got rid of everything that had an annual fee um, because I'm not like traveling, I'm not doing that stuff. And I, I'm going to start playing the credit game a little differently, a little differently. And I'll be talking about that. But once again, guys, if you want to get rich, you need to start a business. You can get rich in five years starting a business, or you can pretend that you're getting rich in the stock market over 30 years. Because once again, there's so many things you have to do you have to consistently invest. You cannot come out the market. And I am willing to bet money that the 20% gain that the S&P had for the 11 years, that ain't gonna continue. It's gonna stop at some point. I can't say when, but it's gonna stop. And then you're not gonna get those juicy gains, which is really going to destroy the annualized return of 10.5%, which ain't really 10.5% when you adjust it for inflation, like last year, it was 20% minus 7% inflation. It's actually 13%. So once again, uh, I'm going to be talking about money velocity because I am comfortable leaving money in the bank. And I know due to inflation that I am losing buying power. I understand that. But money velocity, let's take when I bought the Porsche and the BMW and I paid cash. I had that money back next month. And that's the principle of money velocity. If your money's coming in like that, you're not worried. I'm not worried about inflation. I don't lose sleep worrying about inflation because also I live within my means. I don't live nowhere near the top of my income. Nowhere even close. I am probably living on four or 5% of my income. So I have plenty of wiggle room. So I'm not worried about inflation because what I will do, and this is one of the reasons I'm toying around with starting a credit repair business, is I will create another business that will provide me money velocity. I don't care what inflation is. Whenever I, I have to fill up my car, I always fill up my car. I went to the hood and 
I saw so many people, like, let me get some white owls and 10 on pump four. I saw so many people who were not filling up their car. I cannot remember the last time that I never filled up my car. When my car gets to a quarter tank, I fill it up. I pull over, I get it filled because I am not worried about that. Because when you have money velocity in your life, I'm not worried about, I don't really have that many bills. I, I, re, I, 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 I shopped around and I changed my life insurance policy, which is a grip because I'm old and I've had some health issues. And my, policy, my, my life insurance policy is almost as much as my health insurance. But because I don't have a lot of frivolous bills, it, it's not like it's a burden, if you know what I'm saying, if you feel what I'm saying. It's not like a burden. And we're going to be talking about these things, the things that you need to do as an entrepreneur, things you need to do to situate yourself. Because, like, I, I'm looking at all this noise, and when I do the numbers, and I, I don't really know too many pure investors who have more money than me. I know one, I know one investor and his daddy left him five million because <laughs> uh, I think he's worth about 30 million now, but he started off like, you know, we, we've had this conversation. I was like, you started off with five million. I started off with zero. I had nothing. <laughs> I started off with nothing, bro. So I don't even want to hear that noise. You know, if you started off where I did, I have a feeling I'll be ahead of you. But once again, there are some people who get a financial head start. There are some people who do that. So one of the things that I want you guys to understand and appreciate is you're hearing a lot of messaging and they're leaving out pertinent details. Like I just walked you through it because once again, even if you put money consistently in the market and once again, Dave Ramsey, all of the people who have two and three million, they don't have average income. None of these people have an average income. None of them. Because uh, one guy, you know, he was like, so what was your highest income to do? It was like 90000 90000 $90,000 is three times average income in America. So when you're having that kind of income, you could put $3,000 a month in the market. That will move, that will get you there in 20, 30 years. That will get you there. And there, there are so many things. But once again, a business, because I, I will take, and you can research it, there is something called Credit Hero Repair Cloud. Uh, I was thinking about using it. There are people who literally have made a million dollars in two years doing credit repair. Two years, not 30, two. So once again, you have to understand the situation. You have to understand how things are working, you, you have to understand the whole process. So once again, I'm going to in February, cause I'm gonna work on that this week and I'm gonna create a new training pro, uh, platform, new, the Institute of Economic Thought. I'm, I'm, I'm just gonna do a lot of different kind of training and show you guys how I come up with these analysis and stuff. So let me know your feelings, thoughts, and opinions. And this one person, I have to unsubscribe I'm like, bruh, you are not been in the market for 30 years, so you really can't say. And once again, part of this is it doesn't require you to change to start a successful business. It requires you to change. I am not the person I used to be. Thank God. I had to do substantive and substantial change in who I was as a person. I had to change my mindset. I had to change my behavior. Lots and lots of change. And investing is just like, okay, we just break off a little bit of our income and we don't have to change. That's why it's so attractive. That's why investing, because investing can be really close to rent seeking because rent seeking is to attain money and value without increasing value like people, like rent, rent went up. And these rent landlords didn't do any improvements. They just say, it's like, hey, that's the market. So also with the population, I feel since we've kind of stalled out in population because the population isn't growing, a person dies every, a person's born every nine seconds, a person dies every 15 seconds. So we're, we're just kind of 
tread water right now. And without the vast appreciation of the population, because the demographics, that drove so many things. That drove housing, that drove cars, that drove grocery stores, because from the 1960s until now, our population increased 130 million people. That is sick money. That's trillions and trillions of dollars added to the economy because these people needed clothes, they needed housing, they needed shoes, they needed car. Everything went up because the population increased, but the population has stagnated. And with that, I feel we're gonna see stagnation in the markets, we're gonna see stagnation all across the board. Let me know your thoughts and opinions. Once again, I really appreciate you guys. I'm gonna do something special, I'm gonna set you up. And um, yeah, welcome to the Institute of Economic Thought. You guys have a good day.